Okay, hi, I'm uh, Mike Parker. Uh, I'm the CTO from Crayley Group. Um, okay, yeah. Um, so uh, we've got a slightly different tack on life. Uh, we've been developing novel and innovative ways to deliver the fiber infrastructure to facilitate uh, smart networks. So that's the angle that we're coming from. And um, we call it the Internet of Pipes platform because it's based on using existing water pipes as conduits to actually deliver um, uh, to actually deliver the uh, the fibre. So we're going to be primarily talking about two um, developments today: Atlantis Hydrotech, which is the pipe in a pipe technology for fibre, and ISM, which is a real time leak detection, which overlays on top of it. We have another product which is um, uh, for wastewater pipes, but we're going to skip over that one just for today. We're going to focus on potable water and sensing. Um, first off, it's just worth having a very quick uh, reappraisal of um, challenges that the industry is facing. Water companies, uh, um, oops, I beg your pardon, I think we've got water companies have got some serious uh, issues. Pipes are old and they're getting older and the older they get, the more they leak. A very uncomfortable reality is that most uh, countries, 30% of the water that's processed has actually disappeared before it gets to your house. It's not just the cost of the water and the environmental cost, it's the carbon dioxide emissions for the electricity used to pump that water are absolutely colossal. Um, water leaks are very hard to find and there are water shortages and there are of course increasingly tough regulatory targets in every country. Um, water is a soft target for terrorism. So we'll come on to some aspects where we have some uh, thoughts on this, particularly for chemical, biological, cyber terrorism. And of course, within all of this lot, the big increase that smart uh, networks require in the water industry is smart water networks. This is highly distributed sensors and actuators. At a, and at a government level, most countries have got the same issues. Um, this is fiber rollout is becoming of increasing economic uh, significance. Oops, it just keeps flipping on its own, actually. Um, uh, we need smart network infrastructures, 5G mobile, and the ubiquitous availability. What this means is everywhere, not just in cities, but in rural areas. And rural areas are where the cost of deployment is very high, so they're traditionally underserved. So how are we doing this? Um, Atlantis Hydrotech is a method of using potable drinking water pipes to deploy fiber. So it's basically a hollow pipe that goes inside the water pipe and then fiber optics is blown down it. Obvious statement here, but water pipes go where water company assets are and they also go where people are. So you've got a perfect pre-existing infrastructure to use to actually deploy fiber to take it where you want it. Water pipes, of course, are deep, nice, stable conditions. They're actually in an ideal environment, curiously, to put fiber in. Um, and because it's trenchless, of course, it's much more rapid and it's much greener to install. So typically, we could be deploying a 1,000 meters in a day, whereas a traditional dig might be 50 meters in a day. So there's a big difference in the environmental cost of actually using a pre-existing conduit. Um, there are a, a number of uh, uh, ways of handling this. One is the home drop, the D-series, for fibre to the home. Um, Mid-range sized pipes might lead up to, say, a business park or, or a hotel or a university campus, for instance. And then trunk pipes, which are typically 110 millimetres up to however big you want. The biggest that we've, uh, we've deployed in so far is four metres in diameter, which is pretty huge, the width of this room, nearly. Um, and that's for big trunk point-to-point -point fiber optic links. Primarily, we're talking now about outlying rural areas. That, of course, is exactly where the dearth of fiber is, where the digital divide is, and where communications is desperately needed, particularly high-speed, always-on, uh, passive communications like dark fiber. Um, developing the technology was an interesting challenge in its own right. Water companies are very conservative, and they're dealing with the public and drinking water. So the certification process was also an interesting challenge, but we finally got there and we've now got pretty much every approval uh, that you need pan globally from 
uh, NSF, ANSI, which is the USA, uh, RAS, and uh, DWI Reg 31 pretty much takes us to the rest of the world, certainly the whole of Europe, the Middle East, Africa, uh, and obviously the UK as well. So we're now actually ready to roll full time with this uh, technology. How does it, what does it look like? Um, this is a bit of a view. Uh, you can actually see a couple of examples of fittings on water pipes. These are special purpose pressure fittings to allow the entry and the exit of this, what we call messenger pipe, which is the hollow pipe down which the fiber optics is blown. It goes without saying, but you can't go through valves. I know I'm stating the obvious here, but what we do is we actually have to break in and out of a valve either side. However, for smart water networks with highly distributed sensors and actuators, that's exactly where you need fiber optic communication. So you've actually got a ready built, ideal breakout uh, point for your fiber communications. And this is a very typical example of how what a breakout point may actually look like where you have a loop of the fiber going into a fiber breakout box, which oftentimes is actually in a small separated <coughs> handheld vault so that it can also be used, for instance, to provide comms to things like 5G cell towers and, and similar. Um, uh, or, or for smart sensors, for air quality and similar. Um, flipping on to now to uh, ISM, um, I've said ISM is a new concept for leak detection. Actually, it uses DAS technology uh, with fiber being treated as a highly distributed microphone. So that in its own right isn't new. What's new is that instead of the fiber actually being having to be physically placed alongside a pipe, which retrospectively is virtually impossible or cost-wise simply couldn't be achieved. Uh, it can be achieved if you're using the pipe as a conduit for fiber very easily. Um, so the new concept is actually having the DAS fiber physically inside the pipe. When you've got a fiber inside the pipe, you've got an awful lot of benefits, but primarily the benefit is that you've got incredibly intimate uh, acoustic contact between what's happening inside the pipe and the actual sensing fiber. It's not physically outside, separated by a few feet or a few meters. It's actually inside a non-compressible medium which transmits the sound perfectly. So the sensitivity is virtually unparalleled. Um, and because it's a DAS-based system, what we actually have is the ability to have always on 24 by 7 uh, and, of course, alerting to events literally within seconds of when they occur. Um, so what this actually provides is for water companies is flipping back to Atlantis Hydrotech. That's the communications for the smart city, smart water network sensors and actuators. This is the fix before fail strategy smart networks element, which basically means that when a new leak occurs, a water company can assess how bad that leak is and actually mobilize their teams to fix it immediately, not leave it go until it actually turns into a major burst. And that's when the real problem comes. When a pipe turns into a burst, service disruptions, massive cost, huge loss of water. Um, but of course, DAS also has many other features that are useful for water companies. So for instance, um, we can uh, look at exiting the fiber from the water pipe at a key facility like, say, a service reservoir or a water treatment work, surrounding the perimeter of that facility, going down the access road and programming the DAS system along the water pipe to look for leaks, illegal tapping, and digging activity and then on the perimeter of a key asset to look for footfall, fence cutting, fence climbing, and digging. Down an access road, it can be programmed to look for vehicle traffic, and then when the fiber goes back into the water pipe, at that point, the DAS system is told, now you start looking for leaks again, illegal drilling, uh, pipe tapping activity, and nearby digging activity. So you've got a kind of a hybrid, security system as well as a as well as leak detection um, very simple graphic anybody familiar with das will know this but the key point i want to raise here is that 
because it's DAS, then you can monitor very long runs, 40 kilometers typically, totally passive run. So there's no, nothing other than an analyzer at one end. Um, and as I said, you've got this incredibly intimate acoustic coupling, so the sensitivity really is quite extreme. You can pick up virtually nothing. You're talking about a fraction of a litre per minute that you can, de you can detect in terms of a leak. Um, and because you've got so many virtual sensors that you can actually uh, elaborate down the run, all effectively time-slotted, um, then basically your accuracy of detecting a leak is is also incredibly high. One of the big problems for, for water companies is actually not just knowing that there's a leak. Knowing there's a leak is a big is a problem. But even if they do know that there's a leak, actually not dry holing maybe 10 or 15 pits around an area trying to actually find where that leak actually is. The ability to quite literally put an X on the ground and say dig there and know that that is exactly where you will find the leak. And we're actually looking at some very interesting spin-off applications now, which is looking at the acoustic profile um, of the signal, such that not only can we say there's a leak, but there is a leak and that that leak has actually caused a sinkhole or a void around the pipe at that point as well. So there's a bit of additional information. You can do that by careful um, analysis of what we call sensor result profiling. So looking at the, the the power frequency characteristic of the sound that you get and how it subtly changes when there's soil surrounding a pipe or the soil has gone. Fixed before fail strategy, as said. What water companies love to do is they love to dig down and put a repair saddle on, which is just basically a, a stainless steel clamp with a rubber inner, bolt it down, fill the hole back in. Nothing they like better, because it's quick, it's cheap, it's effective. What they hate is when that hole's got too big and they've got to actually cut the pipe out. So that's where the ability to be able to detect it um, in a very timely fashion starts to become very key. And here we go, a very simple graphic just showing that at any point along a pipe run, you can split that fiber out and then turn it into a distributed um, remote asset uh, third-party intrusion sensor as well. Very, very good for the homeland security aspect. In other words, this is this, this is this threat of water assets being a soft target for terrorism. Matter of interest, uh, the US Army did a study recently and they came to the conclusion that an, a reasonably organized terrorist group could cause deaths for as little as five US cents per person by poisoning the water supply. And that is actually pretty scary when you think how vulnerable water assets are. And finally, and I'm spot on time, I hope you've noticed, <laughs> um, some highlights to keep in mind. Trenchless installation using water pipes as a pre-existing, oops, as a pre-existing conduit. It's rapid, it's highly cost effective, minimally disruptive and it's very green. Um, water companies need uh, increasingly distributed fiber optic comms for smart water networks. So this isn't just general comms linking their assets, but it is highly distributed sensors. Um, flow, pressure, water quality um, and coming down the tracks very soon, uh, things like pathogen and toxin sensors which will be highly distributed every kilometer down a pipe run you'll actually have a toxin and pathogen sensor, but you have to backhaul the data. If you do it via a radio link, that radio link can only update, up, upload data once a day because otherwise the batteries will go flat within a day. This is real time because it's fiber. Um, something else, when you've got fiber that is linking all your assets, of course, you've got almost unlimited numbers of CCTV surveillance feeds. And from a water company perspective, they are free because the fiber's already there. There's no operational cost. Um, obviously, we have the leak and event detection, event like nearby digging and asset perimeter control. And of course, fiber that goes in for a water company's benefit um, is also completely usable for the citizens, for smart city networks, for telecoms providers, internet service providers doing fiber to the home in rural areas where there is not likely to be fiber, and let's not forget about 5G. Every 5G cell going forwards is actually going to need fiber backhaul. 
to deliver the outbound uh, connectivity that 5G promises. I finished it exactly on time. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>